So, in our conversations today, we're going to talk about a couple little things. I got a, a little demo for you. Yeah, Leah is here with me today. Want to say hi to my little friend? All right, so uh, we're just, I'm going to give you a couple tips on something kind of different and fun to do. Anyway, Camelback Carryall is the name of the pattern that I'm going to feature today. And um, it makes a sweet half round bag. Down here you can see they've put a, a monogram on there. I've done something a bit different. So um, I don't really, really want to talk so much about the pattern, but it is something um, it has to do with the demo I want to do for you today. Anyway, this, but some tips. So uh, you can see she has a monogram on here. Um, how do you center something on something with such a funky shape? It's really difficult. So I'll just show you that I traced the pattern out onto freezer paper and marked everything out so that I could easily find the center on this more than a half circle. And then um, I was able to mark my pattern so I got my design centered. And then this will look like this when it's done. It's got a groovy lining. It's where I pulled the color palette from. And um, I believe this design came out of my Bernina software. So it was just a free to use so design in my software. And um, I used it in a class where we talked about em embroidering as well on velvet this is a velvet and then velvet on a project like this it if we had the velvet grain going this way it would be light on this side and then you flip this up and it would be dark on this side and so this one would brush up and this one would brush down so to make it even on both sides I put the grain this way <laughs> so this one when you pet this way it's soft so I cut the bag on the velvet this way and then um, in here I used soft and stable to give it more structure you can kind of see that perhaps yep. so that's the foamy and I did it in black rather than the cream because it hides better in what I've got going on here but anyway it's a cute little bag if you didn't really see it in the picture before there's a ribbon tab here so I decided to customize my ribbon and I had black grow grain ribbon and I found this stitch I found the stitch as a standalone and I embroidered the ribbon to match this so now when I have those pieces of ribbon hanging out the end there they're going to echo the pattern on the front. Cute. So that's just a simple idea. Um, if you have an embroidery machine that uses uh, your stitches as embroidery, uh, you can uh, mount this into the hoop using the um, sticky stuff. And then you can embroider it, which it's a lot easier to keep straight. <laughs> If you want to sew it because you don't have an embroidery machine but you'd like some uh, custom ribbon then you'll just use an edge stitch foot something with a guide on it that'll keep you going straight um, in bringing along that's a number 10 uh, it's available on a sewing foot or um, the walking foot uh, many walking feet have a guide stitch or in brother land the move it foot there's a foot with a guide on it so that you can keep the edge of the ribbon straight and stitch through. Now when if that's not in your wheelhouse you can make ribbon of your own. When you're going to make something like this uh, this is quite starchy. If you starch your fabric and then cut it up is better. 
but if you have to do little pieces uh, take your little piece put it in a in a little bowl and spray it then you don't have starch all over God's green acres and or into a ziploc bag and then it. and then smush it in then uh, and then iron it uh, so this is quite crisp and crunchy now uh. you've got to figure out what size you want to put through there so uh, when the flat fabric like this goes through the tape maker it takes the edges and folds and straight into the middle and so there's lots of places I use uh, bias tape makers and I'm not using bias and I'm not making bias tape. So uh, in this instance, it's ribbon. So I'm going to show you the black one because you can see it quite um, easily on the screen. So here it is mm -hmm. folded to the middle. Maybe through the bias tape maker. Well, you'll see this. So then what we do is do a small zigzag down the edge and then we're going to trim it away on the folded insides yeah you'll just this is a seam allowance that you're going to get rid of here there's it's just a small zigzag on the edge it gives the edge structure and and some bulk like a ribbon because when you touch a ribbon like this it's got a it's got a good solid edge on it so I made ribbon from plain black fabric. Um, I made ribbon from a green fabric here, but rather than doing the step I'm gonna show you, I just surged this one with a, a small um, rolled hem, or a narrow hem, yeah. not a, a narrow rolled, not a small, like the tiny rolled. Yeah. And so you can see, I started out with tape this wide, then I did a rolled edge on both sides. And so you come, I just left it like this so you could see how, where I started. Because this edge is actually folded under there in the stitch. So it's double thick in the serging. So that gives that a little heft, a little more body. And it could match, but these are, these are teaching samples. So best thing not a good match. So you would take your strips, uh, hopefully you starched a big piece of fabric and then cut these, it's easier, but if you did little ones, then you would run it through the tape maker and it will fold it for you. So if you're going to use anything sharp and pointy like a pin, do it gently because you can scratch the inside of that and then it won't be your friend. If the fabric can't f flow through it smoothly so you're not scratching just a smidge more I don't think this is the right size tape for this maker but I'll give you the oh it's close so as it comes through here we put the iron on this end where it, it'll fold and hold for you and then the iron is, you just pull this back and walk the iron toward it, or, and so there's a finger hold here, or some people will take the iron and just use the iron to push it along, but be careful, these can get hot, and you don't want that. This is what you have now, and it's crispy and crunchy and really well starched, and then we'll go to the machine. You're going to select a zigzag. Um... Probably at one wide, one and a half. Let's try one and a half. And then tighter. And this is just a, a regular zigzag. None of the none of the triple stitch or the multi-step, but a simple zigzag. And so we're just not quite a satin stitch. I think I have that a little too tight. So I'm going to go up to like 1.5 and 5. Yeah, that's a little better. And it may track better if you move your needle all the way to the right. So I'll lift the needle up. 
and then you can see traveling here in the middle is a little tougher so what I'll do is I'll move this over so that the zigzag is right on the edge here then I can just keep that edge going up the inside of the foot and so the the right hand swing of that needle should just be coming off the edge of the fabric and then the left hand swing is all on the fabric so the right hand side of the needle is swing is in the air the trick is just to make sure it's actually moving through see and in getting my position and placement it's a little messy in the beginning but look three inches of practice and my other side's almost perfect nice you just have to get used to where you're looking holding folding and then when you're done with this you're just gonna trim trim this excess right out so now you've created your own custom green ribbon sweet and you could, if you needed a wire ribbon, you could put wire in that. So anyway, uh, there you go. Custom ribbon. Super simple. Will match whatever you need it to match. Yeah, that's sweet and easy. Cool, right? Anyway, so that was just my fun little demo today. Ribbon that matches stuff. So this one is different. This one we decorated. You can use any stitch at all. I just used that stitch because it matched this. And it could have been two greens, could have been two purples, could have had three. It's just that I made it a really big stitch to match this. And so I gussied up plain ribbon to match a project. So if you were doing that just as a sewing thing, would you still stick it to stabilizer? Um, to keep it straight and even. So, um, well. Because stabilizer moves weird on your feed dogs. Yeah. And the sticky stuff would be a problem because it wouldn't only, it wouldn't be sticky just that wide. Um, but sometimes a heavy wash away on top okay. is my friend. Or I spray uh, my ribbon with some 505 or the wash away glue stick. And then you can glue it down onto a stabilizer if, if it's puckering. Because um, sometimes it will pucker. This one did, and it did have stabilizer in it. So stabilizer, mm -hmm. depending on the stitch, yeah. could be your friend. And um, I could have just done a simple other design up the middle. It didn't have to have... It could be anything you want. That's the joy of making it yourself. So if you need a piece of ribbon and you can't find something that complements, make your own. Buy a plain one and make it better. Okay, one more. I, f I forgot this one I brought Leah. Oh, okay. Okay, so the other thing about, um, so I make lots of these little straps and there's no way that I'm going to take a piece of fabric this big, uh, sew it with a quarter inch and turn it and then top stitch it on both sides. That seems like an exercise in frustration. It is a huge frustration <laughs> exercise. So if I needed a small tape, so this is what they call a single fold bias, and this would be a double fold bias when it does that. So what I would do, I would run this through, I would make this, then I would take this back to the iron or not even, let me make a really sweet strap, a really small sweet strap in a hurry. Let's just clear the settings, go back to a straight stitch. And then I'm going to top stitch it while I sew it closed. And an edge stitch foot here could be your friend. Okay, just for simplicity, I'm going to stitch across the end. See, so this I sewed it closed. 
and I didn't have to turn it. Brilliant. Right? So I use my <laughs> I use my tape makers for all sorts of things because it just turned into a, a strap maker. Scissors. So on that note, that's how I made all my masks for all my straps. With so, my, I, I did it with my bias tape maker, right? right. Just it, sew it yeah. shut. Yeah, same thing. If you have that fancy tape maker that you have, same thing can happen. Yeah. But um, I love straps like this, and you can make them skinnier than this. You can make teeny tiny, barely quarter inch ones without a moment of swearing. <laughs> <laughs> we like it. We like sewing so, when we don't have to swear what I we do. I brought this it. little teeny tiny, tiny piece of strap, which was also... Um, it, it's part of the bag. So the straight stitch plate will yeah. stop it from lodging down in. Yeah. However, you are, you're only working on one feed dog. Right. So sometimes one feed dog on some machines um, tends to throw you to the left or the right and people can't seem to keep it there. Um, if you have like the new Bernina 7 8 series with the dual feed, it helps pull that through. And you can do, um, a, a, lots of times they do the dual feed with my quarter inch foot, actually. And I use the 1 8 inch mark to do these top stitches. Yeah. Uh, it depends what tool you have at your disposal. An edge stitch foot can be your friend. Um, it has that blade in the middle. But if you're having trouble on a straight stitch plate, the straight stitch plate helps it from, from going down in that hole. But um, you, you only get to use one feed dog. And if that's not an issue, by all means. But that's why I moved the needle to the far right, which you can't do with a single hole plate. Uh, and it, it gave me, let's have a look at the feed dogs, Leah. We have a minute. Yeah, I'll push down. And, um, So, if I'm sewing here, I only have this big feed dog working for me. When I and you can see that we've got three others in the back here. They they work with the bottom of the foot, but by moving my needle over here, look, I've got all these feed dogs working for me. I don't have this one working for me, but I have all of the rest of this, and that helps it feed through cleaner. Um. I hope that makes sense. Um, this is a dual feed machine, so it has this opening in the back of the foot here, and then the the dual feed grabber comes down. It's hard to see with that there, but um, you see it. It works extra with this one, which it might not be grabbing anything if you're using the center stitch plate. But if you move this over here and you have a dual feed foot on, it feeds through mighty straight. And, and pretty easy. And sometimes, look, up here, lots of the machines have a slider for speed. Slow down, people, slow down. It's worth doing perfectly <laughs> once instead of imperfectly quickly. <laughs> so, a couple things, uh, some starch, a good iron, not necessarily bias tape makers, but tape makers. Because uh, none of the fabric I was using today was bias. Uh, because I'm just I'm making straps and ribbon and other things. But if you need to make bias tape, also your best friends. Take care. We'll see you tomorrow. Thanks, guys. Bye.